The extrapyramidal pathways are any somatic motor pathway that's outside of the corticospinal pathways. So the corticospinal pathway is also called the pyramidal pathway. So these are extra pyramidal. Um, they're extra. So corticospinal is involved in conscious movement. These pathways are involved in a kind of subconscious and unconscious adjustments to lower motor neurons. They're still have um, synapsing on a lower motor neuron to a to adjust motor actual movement itself. But they're originating instead of in the cortex in areas of the brainstem. That's what makes them unconscious. They're influenced by subconscious processes. So let's look at some of these somatic motor command centers other than the motor cortex. This is the one we've already talked about, the upper motor neuron, traveling down to the ventral horn of a spinal cord. There's others here. Um, first of all, the only thing I don't have labeled besides the um, areas we're about to look at is the these blue things. Uh, these are the basal nuclei. Otherwise, we're going to involve the um, cerebellum here, labeled as the cerebellar nuclei as part of the cerebellum. And um, regions in the medulla and midbrain. So the, the regions we need to talk about are one in the midbrain here. This is the red nucleus. That's so close to it. Red nucleus. Um, the red nucleus is red because of a lot of blood vessels. It's going to be involved in, in movement. I'll talk about that specifically what it does. But it is involved in a pathway called the rubrospinal pathway. Um, I will label these. Um, this is part of a lateral pathway. This is in regards to where it travels in the spinal cord. So there's going to be upper motor neuron in the red nucleus that travels down to the ventral horn of the spinal cord in some segment. There are also medial pathways that travel through the spinal cord in tracts that are more medial. Three of these, one is superior and inferior colliculus. Superior is actually what's labeled, and that's actually what we'll talk about the most in this image there, that baby butt. This is part of the tectospinal pathway. All of these pathways end with the word spinal because they're all traveling to the spinal cord. So I know with all of these, I'm naming the, the the somatic command center, the nucleus, and then the name of the pathway itself. And I'll get into functions of each of these a bit. Okay, next one is the reticular formation within the medulla. It is right here. And this is the reticulospinal. pathway. I'm going to add pathway to all these where they are pathways. And lastly is the vestibular nucleus. All of these are named uh, names of nuclei, just some of them have the word nucleus in the name and some don't particular formation has the word formation instead. Um, and the vestibular nucleus is where the upper motor neuron is located for the vestibulospinal pathway. Okay, those are the pathways and where the nuclei are. Let's look at them and where they travel 
um, through the brain. I'm actually going to do the rubrospinal as an example with kind of the, the detail of the segments. They all have that the same kind of idea. So I'm not going to show them all in the same way. So th this is doing rubrospinal. Begins in the red nucleus. as shown here. I'm gonna label some of these. Those would be, um, up here would be a section of the kind of the cerebrum is a lot of what's shown up there. Um, this is the midbrain. The red nucleus is in the midbrain. After that, what do we have? Pons, big pond back there. Uh, medulla, we're traveling, traveling caudally, right? And then spinal cord. Cord, okay. Upper motor neuron is what's shown in red. It travels all the way down to the spinal segment that it's contacting. So it's gonna be variable lengths that that rubrospinal tract um, can be. That tract goes all the way from the midbrain all the way down your entire spinal cord, um, although axons are branching off of it as you go down. Okay, then this second red neuron down here, this is our lower motor neuron. Lower motor neuron always goes from the ventral horn of the spinal cord to skeletal muscle for somatic motor. Okay, this is where, like a zoom in of this rubrospinal tract right here. So if we look at, first of all, why it's called the lateral pathway, it's in the lateral column of the spinal cord. Um, this is here a group of axons that are made up of those neurons that were, began in the red nucleus. Group of axons is a tract, right? So this is the um, rubrospinal tract or pathway, same thing. The pathway refers to the path that, this, that the tract is taking. Okay, rubrospinal pathway is gonna receive information um, from the cerebellum. And basal nuclei. So related to posture, um, where the body is in space so we're getting that information, and then it can adjust the ongoing motion that's happening to fine tune it. So fine motor control um, for a, for precise movements. So that's what this pathway what is for is fine tuning movement. Okay, then. There are two more, right? So we did the red nucleus already. Um, in this image of the spinal cord down here, we're going to look at where these the things are again. So first thing to show you is um, the ascending and descending pathways here. So you don't need to know exactly where these pathways are, but um, showing you just the idea of the, these tracks that move together through the spinal cord. Um, we've talked about ascending before, we're doing descending right now. Okay, so we looked at the red nucleus already, this lateral pathway, that is right here. So this is our rubrospinal tract. The one above that that's descending, I might as well label that as well, this is the corticospinal. And actually both of these are, it's in kind of two locations. Okay, I'm sorry, we have three more. Three more to do, yes, okay. Let's do one in green. Okay, in green, I'm going to do the tectospinal. So this is the superior and inferior colliculus. Um, are the nuclei that connect the tectospinal, tectospinal. 
tract. This tract is um, important for posture. So receiving information from that superior colliculus um, is involved in eye movement. Inferior is actually involved in processing auditory information. So posture based on the, those sensory signals. Also receiving information from other areas in the brain that are providing information. So a lot of these are going to be similar, these pathways, um, the extrapyramidal pathways, um, because they're all about a fine-tuning movement um, in an unconscious way. So we're not, we might be aware it's happening, but we're not consciously controlling it. Okay, reticular formation, put that in brown. And here are the reticulospinal tracts. Notice these are more medial. That's why they're called medial pathways as opposed to the lateral ones. The reticulospinal tract is involved in primarily trunk and limb position. Um, it involved in posture and fine tuning movement. Okay. And then last one is our vestibular. So vestibular nucleus receives information from the vestibular apparatus of the ear, really important for balance and equilibrium. Um, that's the last line we have here, vestibulo. So this is important for also adjusting posture, movement, um, but I'm gonna put just the word balance as kind of the other thing um, based on that vestibular input.